Hello and welcome back to the Polygem Tools Tutorial series. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the scalar device. Uh, but before I do that, let me just wrap up some stuff about the PolyArb. Stuff that I didn't mention, like for example this button right here, will, will make a function that the rate and the note are working as a trigger device for the play button. So for example, if without this being clicked, it will react normally, it will play the pattern that we have set up here. With this device working, with this button clicked, if I move the, the note, it will only bang out notes when there is a movement of the dial. It only works with the note dial and the rate dial. Well, maybe it does not. Maybe this is something for version for the next version. This is inspired by a different device that I saw. I wanted to have the, this function that doesn't play constantly, it only play when you move the pitch. Other than that, it has no other function. If you unclick it, you're gonna have to click re-click the play button. Besides that, this section of the effects I explained before the aftertouch, just gonna go over a bit that the mod mod dial works just like a modulation, it sends out the CC number one on this specific channel. The pitch band is sending a pitch band. And this one is you can decide your own CC value just I think this should be the um, the CC number, and this should be the channel number of what you're sending. And so this just allows you to create more complex changing dynamics when you use the record button and move these dials around. So that's it for the polyarb. Now let me show you the scaler. Now the scalar device, basically like you just heard now when I played it, this pattern makes some musical sense because it's using intervals of an octave and a fifth, which is very natural to the ear. But if I would change this to let's say uh, three semitones and this one to like five semitones up, and put this down. Could create an interesting pattern like a tonal pattern, but it uh, won't necessarily do what you want it to do or create the atmosphere that you want to create. So, for this, uh, we have by the way, in order to, in, to use all these devices, you simply need to take the folder from the download link and um, on this page below and um, download the file, the zip file, open it take the folder and just drag it into the max MIDI effects in the Ableton browser in the native browser right here MIDI effects and max MIDI effects you just drop it inside here it should create the folder with all the devices inside okay now for the scaler, the Polygem Live Scaler now this device works remotely so you don't have to put it right after any of these devices for it to work. Actually, it's better not to put it after the device because it's going to jam the MIDI flow. So what you do is you either put it behind or on a whole different channel. I'm going to show it to you that it works soon, but for now, let's put it here. Now, how this works? You basically just select your notes here that you would like to let's say something like this I like to use random notes and um, and then you can either just leave it like that or store it in one of these presets you can move around everything is mappable that's the idea so you can map all these buttons here and basically store different uh, keys Formations. Let's say another one here. 
and I store that one in number two and now I can go back and forth from this to that to this to that another cool thing is that you can actually just let me clear all for now you can just basically use the uh, a keyboard to and plug it here and just record enable and you can live while playing change the the notes that you want the polyarp to play with well, there's some other features here which I won't get into right now let me just sh show you how it sounds so I'm gonna um, work these notes in and now we're still on a chromatic scale all you have to do is switch on the scaler oh it's off wait scalar function just is um, it works but the rhythm is very out of like it's not in sync at all with the rate the moment I switch the screen recording off it works perfectly so just trust me and try it on for yourself and if there's any problem it would be good if you let me know so I'm just gonna go over all of these things these are the store buttons this one clears the the specific store spot that you are on right now. If I stored something else here, you can see I can store that. I can go between these two. If I choose to clear this one, it will only and go back here. There's nothing. It will stay for that on that unless I store a new preset. Clear all. Clears all. The sustain function is meant for if you have like a pedal and like a keyboard, then you can you can click sustain. You can now I'm using my computer keyboard and I'm choosing these notes and I'm clicking sustain. When I let go, it will remain the notes that I chose. If you click again, it's gonna delete it. Now another cool feature here is the global interval. It's set up for 12 which is the octave. It's the default. The purpose of this is to create kind of uh, interesting different kind of scales. For example if I have only one note selected here then the arpeggio will play only this note in all its octave. <laughs> See it going up. Let me make a few steps here. Now, if I'm going to change the global interval to, let's say, 11 semitones, which is just short of an octave or 10 semitones, then it would jump not an octave up, but it would, but 10 semitones up and down. It would find the parallel. 10 semitone interval of this note throughout the keyboard and we'll only choose these notes. Into the mm -hmm. If I change that to 9. So for example if I would create here like a kind of a little chord and put it on 12. Now remember that now the timing sounds completely wacky. It's just because I'm uh, doing this screen recording thing, but if the moment I switch it off, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna upload a, a whole track that we improvised using these tools, so you can see how it works. Listen, to this. so if I try this chord with this global interval of an octave, it would find the parallel octaves of all these notes and. <laughs> Uh, 
and if I would change that to let's say six semitones let's see how that would sound <laughs> So with this kind of logic you can find very interesting type of harmonies that you wouldn't normally think of. Now the last thing I'll show you for this tutorial is the MIDI through. It's a simple function that just allows you to use a few polyarps or a few of my devices in a chain. So you just click here MIDI through and just randomly let's change the pattern here up a bit make something a bit slower maybe and longer notes low velocity and this is gonna play more the high notes the lower velocity this would play more bass let's say and not so much sophistication with the steps of the pitch let's see now this and I'm gonna use an interval, a global interval of seven, and try that. Change to 12 back, sound a bit more coherent maybe. Again, the timing here is more extreme than usual, that's because I'm doing the recording. Let me show you just that I can put this scaler actually in a different, completely separate MIDI channel and I can actually create here some chords and I can create a chord progression, let's say maybe just even two notes that go like this Let's create another parallel and and if I play this you can see here so theoretically you can actually put here a full orchestrated chord progression a long MIDI file and have it running while you play around with the timing and the position of the notes and the steps. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Next time I'm gonna show talk about the, the poly step sequencer. Yes. So you can download the link below. Bye.